Have you noticed that every time you ask a basic question in the group chat about color, somebody gives you this over complex answer? The answer isn't meant to really answer your question, fam. It's to make you look silly and make themselves look smart. And it's a rather simple reason behind that. They really don't want to compete. But today you're in luck because I want to compete with you. I want to compete with them, them, and everybody else in here. Today we're going to simplify color, fam. We're going to show you relationships between genes and whatnot as to why it is that one color will dominate or how it is that we could break it down and kind of get an idea as to what you're going to get before the litter's even born. Before we get started, I just need you to hit that subscribe button and we're starting in three, two, one, let's go. Now, I'm just gonna say this right now, I'm not a geneticist, so I'm not gonna go into all the deep details. So basically, we're gonna start out with phenotype and genotype. I'm gonna make it real simple for you, fam. Genotype is what's inside, phenotype is what's outside, it's what you're able to see. So think of a car, okay? The outside of the car, I don't care what color it is, orange, blue, red, doesn't matter. That's your phenotype. Your genotype is going to be the motor. It's going to be what, what's inside of that vehicle, okay? What's inside of that car. This way, you're able to distinguish what the phenotype is and the genotype. And the reason I want you to distinguish it this way is rather simple. You may have a car that looks a particular way on the outside, like, say, a Trans Am, just an example. But on the inside, it's got, I don't know, a Volkswagen uh, motor. So I want you to understand that there could be a difference. Just because it looks one way on the outside doesn't mean that you're going to have the same thing on the inside. We're going to get to that here in a minute. First things I need you to understand and start getting the language down as far as genetics is locus. Locus is nothing more than location. That's what it means, location. Now think about this as far as genetics like having a book. If I tell you to go to page 77 and that's a particular chapter in the book that's going to talk about exclusively one thing. That's what a locus is. So instead of telling you to go to page 77, I could tell you, hey, go to the uh, page B or B locus. And there in that chapter, we're going to be talking about the black-brown relationship. So again, I want you to understand locus means nothing more than location. And once you get there, that location is going to be specific to something. And we're going to break a couple of them down. First about is allele. Okay, an allele is nothing more than a pair inside of a location. A pair of genes inside of a location. The genes come in pairs. They're either going to be identical, and we're going to call them homozygous, or they're not going to be identical, and we're going to call them heterozygous. It's as simple as that. So in our genetic book, and we're going to start going into each particular chapter or each particular locus, and how they contribute directly to the different coloration in our dogs. First locus that we're gonna talk about is the B locus. Now the B locus is gonna give you their capital B, which is for black, or it's gonna give you a lowercase b, which is for brown. The reason that this is important is because this particular locus has a relationship attached to it that's actually gonna determine the color of the dog. So if you see a dominant B, for example, black, the dilution locus, okay, or, you know, or the pairs in the dilution locus are going to be detrimental as to whether we're going to have a black dog or we're going to have a blue dog. The same could be said about chocolate or liver. Some people like to refer to them as red, but I refer to them as chocolate or liver. Determining on the dilution gene that we're going to be getting into next, if it's clicked on, that dark chocolate could actually become more of a fawn or sable color dog. Whereas if it's turned off and it's a dominant, it would be a strong chocolate color dog. D locus is nothing more than the dilution. So you ever gone down to Home Depot and you notice that whenever you order a particular paint, they drop all these other colors, but they also drop white in there. That's pretty much what this does. What this does is it dilutes the color variance inside of, of our paint jug, or in this case, our dogs. So if you have a capital D, in essence, it means it doesn't dilute. If you have a lowercase d, which is a recessive dilute, that's the one that grabs a black dog. And when you add some of that white to it, it gives you more of that charcoal or even blue color. And the same could be said with chocolate. Whenever you add the dilute in there, you can start getting a lighter color. Again, dilute gene, capital D, it's not there. Lowercase d, it's there. And if we get lowercase d on both sides, and I'll break it down for you here in a minute, 
we're actually going to get a lighter colored dog. So I'm going to give you a real life scenario. Recently, we had power go into Rio and they went ahead and made what we call the liquid fire litter. Now let's get into their genetics and see what was the probabilities of tri pups being produced and let's see what the final outcome really was. Fam, right here we have a pundit square showing you at the very top two lowercase b's. Each one is the contribution of my female to this particular litter. One lowercase b is given to her by her sire. The other one's given to her by her dam. So she's brown on both sides. Right next to it, going, going from up to down, you're going to be seeing those are the genes from my boy, Power. He's the sire of this litter. He has a capital letter B showing black. He has a lowercase b showing brown. So he's technically, he's black on the outside with a dilution gene, which makes him blue, which I'll show you here in a moment. But he's also carrying brown, so he's black carrying brown. So that's what we're seeing right here. Let's go to the next order of business, dilution gene. As you can very well see at the very top, uh, our girl Rio is diluted on both sides, but so is our boy Power. He's got dilute, dilute. They're both lowercase d's, meaning that these are recessive dilution. In dilution, the capital D means there is no dilution. However, the lowercase d means there is a dilution. In this case, I have dilution on both sides, both mother and both father. Therefore, we should be able to see some dilution in the pups. So let's do a quick review. So we already know that 50% of the pups are going to be black. However, they're going to carry brown. And that shows with a capital B and a lowercase b. And we're also going to have 50% of the pups that are going to be brown as they have lowercase b and lowercase b. However, on the dilution side, it shows that we're going to have lighter colors. Both dogs are diluted. Therefore, we're going to, we're going to be looking at 50% of the pups that are going to be black, diluted, meaning blue, and 50% of the pups that are going to be brown, diluted, which could be champagne or a real light fawn. The next order of business is the A. locus, also known as a Gaudi. Now, in this particular locus, you're going to have three identifiers. You're either going to have AT, the T being for tri, AY meaning it does not have any tri, or a lowercase or recessive A, which makes it a recessive black. Now, if you go ahead and look at this particular chart, you're going to see that our girl Rio is a tri carrier. Her combination is AY on top with AT, meaning she's carrying a T or the tri gene, but she herself is not tri. However, if you look all the way uh, down, you're going to see AT and AT. That's our boy Power. He's a full tri. So he shows his tri. He's also carrying us his tri. When we did the Punnett square, as you can see, it is showing a 50% tri carriers and 50% tries. This is what we should be getting. However, so let's get into our first trump card. Here's where it starts getting a little bit complicated. So we have the K locus. K locus is going to have two. It's either going to be KB or KBR for Brindle, or it's going to be KY, meaning it's, it's recessive. Now, when you have KB, it doesn't mean it's going to be black. It could be black or it could be brown. However, KB will always trump your A locus. So regardless if you have ATAT, meaning try, if you have KB, it's game over. It trumps it. It's as simple as that. So in order for you to show your try, in order for you to really, really show your tries and get that 50% that we were talking about, you want your K locus to be KY, KY if possible. And therefore, it will not trump your ATs. So as you can see right here, over in our, our K locus, Rio is KBKY and Powers KBKY. When we run the pundit square, we have KBKB in the middle. We have KBKY, KBKY twice. 50% are going to be uh, somewhat recessive carriers. But then in the very bottom left corner, you're going to see KYKY. And that's what we're after. Because that means that 25% of the pups are not going to be trumped by this K locus. And therefore, what you're seeing over here is going to come through as your try. 
So in essence, when we look at the liquid fire litter and we go ahead and we look at lava and we look at our other female, uh, female Cali, you're going to realize that out of a possible eight pups, we had two that are tri. And therefore, this entire equation that I'm showing you, it's how we got all the way down to those two females that are tri. So basically, fam, this is what you're looking at right here. What you're seeing here as far as this genetic explanation is being expressed in her. And the only reason that she's a tri is because of this KY, KY down here. I already know that she's KY, KY. Also, she could have been a KB, KY, but more than likely KY, KY in order for me to be able to get her tri coloration, as you can see. Based on this also, I already know without much explanation that she's over here. She is a black... Uh, she's got black dominant, but she also has a black recessive, which means if I put her to a brown or a lilac, I should be able to produce it because you need both uh, a black and a red or, or liver color diluted, which we, we already know that she's completely diluted. So this is the information that, that I'm able to see, okay, represented in front of me. Also, I'm going to show you now her sister. Sister right here. Now, remember remember this diluted, double diluted gene we're talking about? You can see it in her. Now, in lava, her being over here being a dominant black and recessive black, she's actually more of a blue tri. But this little girl, she seems to be BB down here, lowercase BB meaning brown. And then when you, when you grab the double diluted, this is what you get. Also, I do know that she has the ATT, meaning that she's tri. And we also know that right here, the KYKY, KY, she has to have it. Otherwise, it would trump the tri. So I don't know if you can see it, but she is very light tri. Okay, she's what you call a lilac -like tri because she has, well, hold on before I say that. We don't know yet if she's a lilac tri or not. I, I basically have to do an embark. If she happens to be this right here, then definitely she is lilac. If she happens to be this down here, then she's just a uh, very light fawn, maybe even champagne, if you will, uh, tri. You can see her coloration. She's about to get her ears cropped here next week, so don't worry about it. But you can see her coloration, and this is what I'm talking about. Um, she's got that double dilution, so it's even barely noticeable because her coloration is so light. And if you like the video, if it's been able to help you as far as understanding colorations and whatnot, and you want me to do another episode, I need you to go ahead and hit me a share. I need at least 250 shares to be able to make another episode of this. Otherwise, we're just going to change the subject. Either way, fam, this has been Raul from the Q. Catch you on the next one.